chapter lesson, I should say, 10.7, which as promised is your last ever chapter in Go Math for fifth grade. It's not the last math we're ever going to do this year, but it's the last time we're going to be taking notes like this, okay? And as you know, chapter 10 is all about converting units of measurement. We've talked about customary and metric. In fact, flip to your three column chart right now and take a look at the customary and metric units you've kept track of and fill in any that you might have missed. And that is time. Today we're talking about time, okay? And time does not fall into customary or metric. It's kind of its own thing, okay? And today we're talking about elapsed time. What does the word elapsed, what does that mean? What does the word elapsed mean? Karan? After, okay, it means how much time has passed. So how much time has elapsed since we came to school? Looking at the clock, how much time has it been since we came to school? Tanvi? Oh, it's right, because we can see on the clock that right now it's 8.55 and we started school at 8.30. So it's been 25 minutes have elapsed. That's how you could say that, okay? And your learning goal that you should have written down already in your science, I mean in your math notebook, is to today you need to be able to convert units of time in order to help you solve elapsed time problems. In the case of Deanna, we're trying to convert from deciliters, or the drinking, right, down to milliliters. So how many times do we have to move it? How many powers of 10 are we changing? Divina? Two. two. Are we getting two powers of 10 smaller or two powers of 10 bigger? Smaller. smaller. Does that mean I need to multiply or divide? Okay. Multiply. So I need to multiply 2.5 by two powers of 10, which is what? 100. When I'm multiplying, I can just move the decimal point to the right or to the left? How many spots? Good. So the answer would be 250 milliliters. Good. Excellent. It says a computer company claims its laptop has a battery that lasts four hours. Okay. Do you guys think our laptops here could last four hours? They probably run out in like two hours, okay? But how many of you guys have a laptop at home that does last quite a long time? Like maybe up to four, four hours is pretty long. I think my um, teacher iPad, laptop could probably last four hours. Okay, so a company, you know how like all the ads will say, oh, long battery life lasts up to eight hours, right? So this particular computer company claims that its laptop has a battery that will last four hours. The laptop, when they tested it, when somebody tested it, actually ran out after 200 minutes. So our job is to figure out, did it actually last for two hours? I mean, sorry, four hours? Okay, so what two units of measurement are we presented with here in this problem? Harshita? Hours and minutes. Hours and minutes. So can we compare right now four hours to 200 minutes? We need to first convert, right? And we know that in one hour, how many minutes are there? 60. Okay, so our first step is to convert the minutes into hours and minutes. So go ahead and write for yourself, 200 minutes equals blank hours and blank minutes. Well, we can use an equation to help us. We know we have 200 total minutes, and we need to divide that by how many minutes are there in one hour? 60. 60. So what's 200 divided by 60? Go ahead and do it in your math notebook. 200 divided by 60 is what, Karan? Okay, thank you. Three hours. Remainder 20, right? So we know that 200 minutes equals 3 hours and 20 minutes. Go ahead and make sure you have that written in your math notebook. Now let's compare. 3 hours and 20 minutes, is that greater than, less than, or equal to 4 hours? Less than. So our answer we could explain, since 3 hours and 20 minutes is less than 4 hours, the battery does, does or does not? Does not last as long as the computer company claims. In this example, what units of time are we dealing with? Are we dealing with minutes and hours? No, no. What units of time are we dealing with, Adam? Um, days. Yeah, we're dealing with days and weeks, okay? So your first step then is to find the total number of days away. So in your notebook, go ahead. She's spending 10 days with her grandparents, nine days with her cousins, and 22 days at camp. How many total days is that? How many? 41 days. Okay. Then we know that there are how many days in one week? Seven. We know that one week is seven days. 
So how can I find out how many weeks there are in 41 days? Well, I take the total number of days, which is 41, and I divide it by the number of days in a week, which is 7. So how many, what's 41 divided by 7? It's 41 divided by 7. Nathan? Is five remainder six. So Jill was away from home for five weeks and six days. These are the different units of time that we know that we work with in our lives. Okay, just like we have metric units of length, width, or sorry, length, weight, and capacity, and we have customary units of length, weight, and capacity. We also have different units of time. Units, and you can add this to your three column chart, right? It measures time, but it shouldn't go under customary or metric. It's its own thing, okay? We use seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, years, and months to measure. And we also have like decades and centuries and millenniums, but we are not going to work with that right now. So it says Monica spent two and a half hours working on her computer. How many of you guys could easily spend two and a half hours working at your computer without even knowing that two and a half hours have passed? Yep. Working is a loose term, right? Okay. If she started working at 10.30 a.m., what time did Monica stop working? Okay, so we can set up a number line, and I want you to draw this number line in your notebook to show you how you can use a number line to help you solve elapsed time problems. Each one of these tick marks represents half an hour. So what time did Monica start working? 10.30. So let's label this start 10.30. If that's 10.30, what would this time be? 11 o'clock, right? And then what would this one be? 11.30. What about this one? 12 o'clock. What about this one? What about this one? And then this one would be? Okay, so go ahead and set up your number line where each little mark is half an hour. Now, how long did it say Monica was working on her computer? Two and a half hours. So we have one hour here, and I have another hour here, right? It would go till here, plus another half hour, plus 30 minutes. And so what time did she stop? What? Looking at our number line, if she worked for two and a half hours, here's one hour, here's another hour, and here's 30 minutes. What time did she stop working? 1 o'clock p.m. Okay. So I want you to explain to your neighbor right now, how does this number line represent the, the situation described in the problem? 